All right, I think it's time for me to turn a new leaf and tell you how I became a web developer in three months. So let's get started. So for those that don't know, my degree is in physics and I always knew that like web developers always had a really good salary, so I wanted to get paid. So I wanted to become a web developer or some kind of some kind of job. I wanted some kind of job. So at the beginning of my three month journey, I knew very little about C++. I took some classes on in college. I took some classes in Java. I know very minimal C sharp. I like tried to do some game design in Unity. Um, I, only times I really used Java was like with Android app creation and stuff like that, and maybe like very basic programs, but nothing really glorious or like production ready or web developer y. So I I knew how to I knew like about like the data structures and algorithms you hear about when like people study for fan companies. So I knew those like minimally like link link lists and trees. I could probably I couldn't implement one on the spot probably to save my life. Like if I was stuck on a cliff and they told me to implement one, I, I probably m might be able to do it, but it might take me a long time. But um, I also don't have a computer science degree, probably uh, as this title might say. So I didn't have one of those to fall back on, like if um, they they care about that. Because some, com some companies do care, but I don't think all, every company cares though. So I did take a couple co classes in programming, like um, data structures and algorithms. And I did fail that twice though, so oops. <laughs> but I did get the general gist of it, and I hope you get the general gist of this video. So make sure you triple click that like button for the YouTube algorithm so that I don't fail it again. Not that I will take it again. <laughs> so at this point in time, where I started, I've been looking for a job for a long time. Like, it's been like at least three or four months since I was looking for a job, and I wasn't sure of what kind of job to go for. Oh, let me turn this off. So I wasn't sure whether uh, I wanted to go for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software engineering, or maybe like optical engineering, because that kind of related to physics and light and stuff like that. So uh, I had a one long interview for like software engineering. So it was like for a company that made screen readers. So if you've heard of JAWS, they make screen readers. And I, I didn't get it because it was like a whole long day interview. So that was first of my very brutal interviews, where it was the whole day. And it really wore me out. But I, I did this, want to decide that I wanted to go for this more software engineering kind of job. So I kind of failed it because I didn't touch, hadn't touched C++ in like two years. So I didn't get the job, which is fine. But I started applying more and more for like more software engineering jobs. And I had like three different types of resumes, like for electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, all that kind of stuff. And I even had cover letters. I sent cover letters to all these applications as well, depending on what job I would try to apply to. So my web development track really began, my first three months start began when I got a call from like a, a web development bootcamp company. I won't say which the name is. Um, maybe I'll do a review of it, like maybe November or something like that. I'm not gonna say the name right now for, um, for reasons, I don't know why. Um, so they wanted to interview me, okay? And I said, um, they said a study up on like web development stuff. So like, you know, your typical HTML, CSS, Java, JavaScript. So that's what I did. I studied up on those things and I had like a week to, before the interview. So I, I didn't know anything about HTML, JavaScript, um, CSS, because really no one ever got to it in my classes anyways, since I don't have a computer science degree. So I didn't know any of those. So I started studying my head off and you know, those are really easy to learn. You can learn like HTML, CSS in a couple days really, like a day or two. So I spent like a couple days on HTML, a couple days on CSS. I was like going really into detail on the details of them because I knew they would like ask very specific questions and maybe like a day or two towards the end on JavaScript. And I would just go through, I think I like would just like Google HTML and like took the very first tutorial or something like that. And it, it was really in depth. Like it went through like, try this. It would like teach you about it and then have you practice on it. I believe. That is what really helped me learn that kind of stuff where you had to like learn something and then you practice immediately on it. And that's what helped me learn. So I did that. I, I went really all in on this because I really wanted to learn. I really needed a job at this point. I've been out of job or I, at that time I was out of the job for like a couple months. So I needed to get paid eventually. I still had money saved up so I was good. So, but a lot of people aren't in that kind of situation. So I didn't study much of Java since I, that was like my first ever language I knew. So um, I, since I learned that like AP computer science in high school, but so yeah, I didn't, I studied like, I reviewed it a little bit, but I didn't really study it. So I got into the interview and I answered most of the questions I feel like correctly. I didn't, I don't think I did Java very correctly because it was a long time since I learned Java. All right, so I got accepted into the bootcamp. So that's what I did. I joined the bootcamp and look, luckily for me, I was 
still in Florida, so it was in Florida as well. So the boot camp was, it was 12 or 11 weeks long or something like that. And it had a really rough cu curriculum where like there would be quizzes, there would be projects you have to do. And oftentimes I would spend all like, all day on the boot camp, and then all day at home, just learning, studying, doing projects. Like I didn't really have much time for any games or any anything else, any social life at the time. So the first week we learned all of Java, which was really easy for me since like I had a background in Java, like a little bit, anyways. But we really went into depth, and I learned a lot about Java that I would have never known about, and probably have would have never used. I don't think I used Java too much since. Like since the boot camp, anyway, since I went into more of like a serverless kind of role. So we made a simple command line project like at the end of that week, and it was pretty cool. So, second week, I learned SQL and started to combine it with Java. So, this is kind of like where you would create stuff that would call Java, or you would create things that would call SQL. And this is kind of where I got introduced to AWS. So, without that, I probably wouldn't have had this channel and made a million AWS videos on it on cool certifications and stuff. And so second week we learned a lot of SQL and then I didn't know I didn't know any SQL before this. So SQL we did, did that, that in like two days, three days or something like that. Like we had to know all the cool SQL commands. I didn't use haven't used SQL that much since, honestly, but it's always good to know a little bit. So I also learned about AWS EC2, how to deploy kind of simple applications to EC2 to RDS, creating databases with AWS RDS, and for hosting the Java servers and the PostgreSQL database. All right, so from Java and SQL, we, I, we went directly into learning HTML and CSS. And this is, I, don't, I didn't know much about this like since like studying for it anyways. I didn't know anything to begin with, but I, I kind of really liked HTML and CSS because I really liked the display aspect of it. So from there, I also learned JavaScript. Like these kind of three things were very like, uh, did those very quickly because afterwards we would implement them in React, which would be, I guess, much more thorough in kind of using HTML and CSS. So we also learned a little bit of TypeScript in there, throwing in some TypeScript, some Pepper in, and at the same time as learning the basics of React. So, so around this point as well, I would also create a backend server. I think I would like spend a weekend on it, creating a backend server written in JavaScript in a framework called Express. So Express is just like a JavaScript node uh, framework, and you can just call SQL on it as well. So this would be hosted on AWS. So then I would go on to write a front end for that as well. I think that's probably in the second part of the weekend or something like that. So calling the front end and the back end and creating the full, my first ever like full stack application kind of thing. And yeah. So this would happen around the third or fourth week when I had my first ever like full stack full stack application that would have like SQL, a server, and a front end. All right, I think it was my fourth week where we started to go back to Java. So it was kind of a lot to go from Java to um, HTML, CSS, SQL, and then back to Java because this time with Java we we got to had to go like more advanced on it, and we started to learn a framework called Spring. And with Spring, we would go on to, Spring is very complex, by the way. Spring had a bunch of different modules and stuff like that on it. And we would learn Spring Boot, which made everything really easy in the back end. And Spring Boot, like, it was really easy because it would automatically create SQL tables and columns for you, like, if you declared them in Spring, which was so, so easy to use, honestly, like, creating stuff. Like, once you got the hang of it, anyways, compared to, like, Express, anyways. so. After like we got the hang of Spring, we would create a social media application, or at least the back end would be made in Spring, and we would use SQL and Spring Boot as the back end, once again, hosted on AWS, and then alongside React again for the front end with TypeScript, but we could have just used JavaScript. So I was also using, or I was also building this application with a group of three other people in a project kind of scenario. And we would also be using code build and Jenkins for like continuous integrations and continuous deployment, CICD. So around like the fifth or sixth week, we would continue learning like Spring and Spring Spring Boot and stuff like that, and we would continue like imp improving that. But we didn't really have much more formal learning after that. After we learned all the key frameworks and the key services, so around the sixth or seventh week, 
week, we just went into like straight project mode where we would stop our formal learning and like for at least for the boot camp anyways, and we would kind of work on our final project for that boot camp, which was a much larger scale project compared to the previous ones. So we had the whole boot camp working on it, and I was the team leader for the back end, but um, we'd have different kinds of like back end servers that we would kind of like use all alongside each other. So we would like they would all be using Spring, and we would have like logging, and then we would also have a whole team for the front end as well. And we had a lot of people on this, like I want to say like 27 people total, maybe like 13 for the back end, 14 or 14 for the back end, like 12 for the front end or something like that. That's 26, but there was 27 total. But anyways, uh, we had also a very complex SQL structure, which added really a lot to the complexity. Like we had a bunch of people working on individual servers, and we also like one of my things I did was I put like the security together for like using JWTs, which are just uh, JSON web tokens to kind of like encrypt the data. So, anyways, we presented this project to a company, and that was the rest is history. Like we presented it, they. They ask those questions, and yeah, that's, I guess, the first time it's presenting and for such a large group of people, I guess. Um, so soon after came interviews, and for the current company I worked at, and they asked, they didn't really ask many technical questions. They, I was honestly expecting more technical questions, but they asked really non-technical, like, if you were in an interview, or if you were in an elevator, like, uh, and it was falling or something, I don't know. It was it was weird, non-technical questions, but they wanted to see how you think. And it's kind of hard to do that when such a short interview time, and it was really short interviews. So they did ask, ask some technical questions. They asked me, like, um, how we made our backend secure, since I was, like, the team lead. And I said, like, we use JWTs, like I mentioned before. And then, yeah, from the rest, from there, the rest is history, and I... Got the job and I drove up to Northern Virginia from Florida. And yeah, that's that. All right, that should be the end of this video. I uh, hope you liked it, enjoyed it, learned something. If you did, make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you later. Peace.